Hi, I'm Neil Current, and I'm going to talk about scholarly reflective writing for professional development of lecturers in higher education. So what might we expect to see in reflective writing? Well, it's very much about analysis and not just description. It involves acknowledging feelings as well as thoughts. You need to demonstrate a sense of development and learning through the reflective process. It is about being critical but constructive. You should ask yourself questions and challenge your own assumptions. It should include feedback from others, so Brookfield's Four Lenses. It is informed by literature and theory. You should have expressing your values as part of that, particularly around student learning. And it should very much focus on future actions. What are you going to do next? So some questions you might ask yourself are, why did this happen? How do I feel about it? What would I do differently next time? What have I learned from this? What skills, knowledge do I need to develop? What did my students, colleagues think? There are many models of reflection and they may be a good starting point for your reflective writing. So for example, Gibbs Reflective Cycle. Okay, so we're going to analyse a piece of reflective writing. So the piece we're going to analyse today is a reflection from an engineering lecturer on the PG cert and he's reflecting on his teaching observations. So he's written just about a thousand words reflecting on his teaching observations. So if you have a look on screen, he starts by talking about the feedback he's received from peers and from colleagues. And from that he's identifying his strengths. In the next paragraph, he's making the links to the UK Professional Standards Framework, acknowledging that it's there, acknowledging that it's part of the profession of teaching and learning in higher education. So he's giving us some, some context there. And in the next section, then he starts to acknowledge some of his difficulties in his own academic identity. So he, he's thinking that he's an engineer first and he's struggling with the academic identity. And he's doing that in a very reflective manner in order to come to a better understanding of himself as an academic and as a teacher and an engineering teacher. And in the next section, he then starts talking about how to improve his practice. And he gives some specific example and detail about what he's thinking of doing and why. And it's not woolly, it's not vague. There's a definite sense of purpose, a plan of action about what he's going to do. And you get the sense that he's going to make it happen. This is something that he's planned for, he's written a draft and so on. And this is what's going to happen. And he talks a bit more about that in this section. And you can see there there are a number of references. So he's starting to integrate the theory into his own thoughts and his own reflections to help him to justify the changes he's going to make and identify the benefits that those changes will make to his students. And then if we have a look at the next section, again comes back to acknowledging how he feels about his teaching. And he's very much questioning himself, questioning his practice, and he's using feedback to support his perspectives and to explain why he's adopted certain practices. So there's that feedback from peers, from students, and his own thoughts and reflections coming together to sort of say, this is what I'm doing, this is why I'm doing it. And in this section, he's talking about, again, trialling a new practice that he's already put into place. Um, and he's getting feedback from students. So we've had feedback at the beginning from, from peers, from colleagues. Now he's talking about some feedback that he's got from students on his teaching. And he's very much considering the student perspective and the impact of his teaching on his students. And I think that's a really crucial part of the course and any reflection about student learning. And then finally, very briefly, he has a conclusion where he summarises what he's learnt and his future actions. So in summary, what are the strengths of this reflection? Well, the writers identified their own strengths. They've acknowledged the challenges and they questioned themselves in order to help their own understanding of their practice. They've explained the rationale for their practices and the decisions that they've made. 
They've given specific examples of how practice will be improved. They've sought feedback from colleagues, from students, and it's suddenly informed by literature and theory, and possibly most importantly of all, it considers the student perspective. So just a quick guide to reflective writing. I hope that's been useful. Thank you.